Oh yes, my friends. It's time we finally start talking about endurance. All of us love a good cardio kickboxing session where we leave a pile of sweat on the floor, or maybe a prowler session you prefer, where you get a little bit of prowler flu and lose your lunch on the floor. A lot of us enjoy, or at least attempt, to subject ourselves to a little bit of endurance or fatigue or conditioning training, but few of us really understand it from a physiological perspective. And if we do, it's generally too siloed. We don't understand the full breadth of, of the physiology of endurance. Now, this is a five minute video, so I'll keep this very brief and short. If you like this topic though, I would encourage you to check out the other five, 25 and 55 minute videos of fatigue, endurance, conditioning, metabolism, and all hosts of different things. But let's jump right into it. We have to take this from the entire system down approach. And if we understand human movement, we realize it starts at number one, the nervous system, and it works ourselves all the way down to the lung. So I don't have time to go through each one of these in depth, but basically what happens is I've listed on the side there uh, some of the more potent culprits of fatigue in each of these individual systems. So I'll go through a couple of them, starting with nerves so you get the idea. So we have to realize that our nervous system itself is actually powered by carbohydrate. No, that's right. We have to generate energy for the nerves to work. If they start losing their fuel source, they don't contract or per they don't contract. They don't transmit signals very well. They get fatigued just like a muscle can. Uh, in particular, one of the things that's important there is the Na plus the sodium pump. Um, you can look more into that if you like that physiology, as well as the pH. So any disruptions in any of those three areas can cause fatigue of the nervous system, whether that be central or peripheral. We can see we could go through the same thing with the muscle, PCR, uh, phosphocreatine, a huge energy source, uh, glycogen and fat. So those would all be substrates. So those are the things we use to generate energy. Uh, metabolic speed is another thing. So it's, sometimes it's not necessarily that you're fatigued. It's just the fact that you can't produce ATP fast enough. And that could be because you lack the enzymes or a whole host of other metabolic reasons or because of pH. Now remember, pH is a little bit funky because a lower pH means a higher fatigue, right? And so you feel the burn, right? You're doing intervals. You felt that before. From the blood perspective, same thing. It's, it's primarily job is to, to keep blood glucose levels fairly stabilized because our brain uh, uses a whole host of that for fuel. And so if blood glucose levels get too low, you can get fatigued. Uh, same thing with fat or uh, we're, we're using the blood to get oxygen in, carbon dioxide out, uh, LA, Negative is lactate, so we're trying to transport that or, out to the, or other hydrogen protons, the H+, getting that out of the overloaded muscle, if that's the case. Uh, capillary density and blood flow is going to be the primary determinant of things like getting nutrients and supplies into the tissue. And so one of the classic adaptations to endurance training is you increase capillarization to the fibers. Right? And this is why that improves performance or reduces fatigue. Mitochondria density would, would fall in the same line here. Uh, the liver, primary job in terms of exercise performance is to supply glucose to the muscle and probably more proximally to the blood. So muscle will eventually take glucose from the blood, therefore reducing blood glucose. So the liver will then kick out its glycogen into the blood to keep glucose uh, at a stable level. If that runs out, we start becoming fatigued. From the heart's perspective, of course, we're trying to circulate blood so that we can take all the things that are put in all, the, all those byproducts and waste products into the blood and help get them out via respiration for the most part. And so a reduction in stroke volume, which is the amount of blood pumped out per, uh, per beat, uh, or the heart rate, right, so the amount of beats per minute, all those things are going to be uh, limiting factors to performance uh, or contributing to fatigue. And then finally, the lungs, of course, we're trying to inhale an, uh, O2 and exhale CO2. And that's an active process of maximal exercise. And so the, the inspiratory lung muscles, the diaphragm and the, the intercostal muscles themselves can get fatigued because remember they are a skeletal muscle as well. And so they're gonna run into the same problems that your normal muscle would. So that's a quick overview of fatigue physiology, but let's remember each type of endurance, and we'll talk about a whole host of different kinds in other videos, has a specific failure point, somewhere between one and six. In fact, uh, several types of fatigue have multiple. Right. So as a little bit of a teaser, you can see this in some of the other videos, I've gone through several different types of performance, everything from max power to muscular endurance to intervals to long duration. And in those videos, I'll explain to you of these six different levels, which one of these things are fatigued uh, during each type of activity. And then maybe, uh, maybe if you're nice, I'll give you some tips on how to prevent that from happening. But for now, that's all you get. 
Thanks a lot for sticking by 5-Minute Physiology, and we'll catch up next time.